what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we'll be talking about scream 7 in this video here today we're going to be going over seven things that should happen in scream 7 now i've already done seven things that should not happen and to follow up as most of you are already suspecting there should be a seven things that should happen video and there is now starting off number one sydney prescott if included should have a significant role similar to how it was in screen five now some would argue it wasn't significant because she had little screen time but that's not ultimately going to decide if it's significant or not it's ultimately going to come down to what was done within the time that you occupied the screen so you could be on screen for 30 minutes twirling your fingers or some other nonsense that does that does zero to move the plot forward it does zero to establish why you as a character are back other than for nostalgia purposes so Sydney should be established as a significant. Well, what I was going to say is that Sydney in Screen 5, she's established as being very significant the minute that Dewey begs her not to come back. And she says she doesn't plan to, but almost tear tearfully tells Dewey to just be safe. Now, it's significant because upon rewatching it, it's a great way to set the foundation for her inevitable return to avenge the death of the man who would risk it all to keep her safe during those original uh, sprees original sequels if you will now scream 7 should just introduce her a lot sooner than 5 or any of the other three entries if you want to by putting sydney's family in the opening sequence to immediately establish that she is just as important this time around as sam is and a lot more important than she was in 5 by making her an immediate target that's what i would do now number two two stories should unfold similarly to how screen three but everything is connected just like with screen three so screen three basically has a story with sydney living in hiding she's haunted by the memory of marine and fearful of ghostface tracking her down and of course that slowly becomes her reality so she joins the second story which connects them all midway which is dewey and gail and the stab stab three cast trying to solve the hollywood murders which we know still involves somebody looking for sydney prescott and trying to draw her out of hiding so scream seven can be similar to scream three in that way instead of the obvious let's do a sibling twist again give sydney her time to shine in her own story and the core four can have their own story but it's all connected midway think of it like harry potter and the deathly hallows but it's obviously would need to be able to flow well you basically would have a story with the Death Eaters. For those of you familiar with Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1, you have a story with the Death Eaters playing out, and then you have Harry chasing the Horcruxes. So in this case, you'd have Sydney's story, and then you have the Core 4 story, and you have the overarching villain for both parties, Ghostface. I believe Screen 7 can do it. Uh, it's already been done somewhat with Screen 3, but do it a little bit better i would argue in scream 7 now number three here is going to be tara's dad should make an appearance maybe sam and tara live with their father now and what if he's the opening kill of scream 7 that's always a possibility but the point is i think that he should also get his butt in here just as much as christina should and explain his side of the story along with christina would you love to meet mr carpenter why or why not let me know down below i just would love to see his reaction where in my own vision Christina is revealing that she was planning to run off with Billy Loomis. I have nothing against that man. I'm not saying that he deserves to suffer, <laughs> but it sounds like he suffered enough, of course, with this lady. But let's get them both in here and just see these parents. Let's meet the Carpenters and see them as a unit. Perhaps the broken family can be repaired by the end of it all. Even if they don't get back together, you can still, of course, end it on amicable terms or everybody is content with where they leave things at now number four here ghostface should have a phone call with chad or mindy i think we all agree that someone in this unit the core four needs to be act off in axed off in seven whether it's two three four remains to be seen but someone has to go i'm not saying it has to be chad or mindy i mostly want to talk about the phone call stuff there's nothing like an intense pre-death phone call to set the stage. We've seen Sam and Tara with the call, not necessarily saying that Sam has had anything overly intense. I, you could argue Tara's had more intense calls with Ghostface than uh, Sam. But I'd like to see Chad or Mindy go against Ghostface on the phone. And I'm leaning more towards Mindy having that phone call just because with her being such a major horror fan, I think there's an opportunity for that call to really mess with the character's psyche. Because it's all fun and, fun and games when you watch these kind of movies, but living them is a whole different ballgame. A call with Mindy where Ghostface taunts her, reminds her about losing it, 
losing Annika, taunts her about Randy, or even her mom, Martha, if she dies. And we see Mindy just break down and go berserk over the phone with the killer as he reminds her that this isn't one of those movies that she loves so much. Jasmine would likely crush it with her performance, of course, too. Not that Mason wouldn't do a good job if he was in the hot seat. I just would prefer, would prefer out of the two for it to be Mindy. Now, number five rely on the returning cast to carry the story because they have so many survivors to choose from when it comes to who is and isn't coming back likely it's going to be all of them uh more survivors will be here than newbies so use that's the likely assumption so i would say use the survivors to carry the story and don't discard your newbies is not what i'm saying but seven has an opportunity to do something that no other film in the franchise has had that chance to do when you have so many returning stars coming back and that's relying on the fact that viewers are already invested in these people so use that investment to carry the narrative flesh out some arcs for these people uh and if done correctly it should make up for the underdeveloped newbies and i'm not saying that the newbies will be underdeveloped but if you have all of these survivors you shouldn't really focus on your newbies anyway you should truly really try to hone in on what people are already invested in and that's all these survivors that you decided to bring back um it also will make their deaths that much more heartbreaking like scream 7 just has a chance to shatter hearts and with all of these survivors coming back you should really go for the jugular now number six here would be close the sydney prescott story for good Sydney Prescott and this argument that she needs to be in every screen movie, no. Sydney Prescott deserves her piece. There is a very clear path for the character that I believe wholeheartedly is started in the beginning of the trilogy. And Kevin Williams in himself still echoes that he wanted to give Sydney that happy ending. So why don't we just give it to her? If the franchise keeps going due to commercial success, we don't need to keep throwing Sydney into the mix because then ultimately what will happen, if she dies, then people are gonna be really upset. And I'm gonna just circle back and tell everybody that this is why you need to recognize that certain characters, they do indeed have a shelf life and you need to stop using them and picking them off of the shelf. Kind of like how I'm hearing that Andy might be coming back for Toy Story 5, why? I don't know why. Now, number seven, connect Sydney and Sam's stories once and for all. Connecting Sydney and Sam's stories once and for all, to me, many of you heard me echo this several times. That involves Christina and some type of connection, some type of bombshell that she drops where she knew exactly what was going on in Woodsboro. She knew what was going on with Maureen's murder. She didn't say anything. She's the silent accomplice. That's the final straw. That's the connection between Sydney and Sam and this one final bow out of these two characters. Because I think after this film, if they want to, we shouldn't see these characters anymore. But I would connect sam and sydney stories one final time once and for all let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there is a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in my guys i will see you in the next video